What you see behind me in the distance is the Grazen Mountain, the last one from the previous segment in uh, North Macedonia. There is a trail that goes to Tumba Peak. It's a triple border peak, which is shared between North Macedonia, Greece and Bulgaria. There is also like an old military post out there. Uh, I just saw a few out here. So that's all left from the Iron Curtain <coughs> in the past. So hopefully when uh, also Bulgaria fully joins Schengen, uh, then the border with Greece will just diminish. So you can just climb up here and then go down to Greece, the seaside and whatever else you fancy. But for now, Belastsa Mountain in Belastsa Nature Park and some, uh, some 20 plus kilometers on the ridge. And uh, looking forward to Peak Radomir which is about 2,000 meters. What a gorgeous view, huh? So a peak on the other side, you'll see some remains from uh, border control uh, outposts. Water is fairly dispersed, so on the other side where I climbed up, uh, as I uh, went up from uh, Gabrene, the village of Gabrene, uh, water is just before you go above tree line, and, and just before Radomir there's another uh, reliable water source. We're not gonna climb the last side anymore. It's uh, it's pretty much uh, a new destination now. I've uh, left the town of Petrich yesterday and uh, made my way through the valley and just uh, uh, entered Slavyanka mountain. So I made it like four, 30, 30 something kilometers out of Petrich and uh, I camped by a uh, by a small uh, hunting shelter. Unfortunately, it was locked. It's just over there. I think you can see it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the shelter is locked, but uh, there's a couple of uh, tenting spots. It's dry though. There is no water around it. So, but along the way down in the valley, there is plenty of water, so you can stock up at the last place. Next destination, it's Izvora Hut, which is. Uh, I guess a starting point for the big climb to uh, Gotsev Peak. It's um, it's the destination for today, and then descend down into the valley again <laughs> through Slavyanka and Piran Mountain. So see you along the road, guys. And temperatures are good, so not close to still above 30, but not close to 40. Happy trails. Yesterday, at the start of the day, I was not feeling very well and with every hour it just 
my condition worsened. So I barely got to go to Delche, but luckily I managed to find a hotel there. Stayed, uh, recovered, rested. Uh, it was some sort of like a fever virus with high temperature and exhaustion. Yeah, I don't know what was it. It was either uh, over exhaustion or exertion uh, or bad water. Uh, even though most of the water resources were good along the way, through all the way through. Well, Slovyanka was pretty dry, so not much of water there, but uh, the few resources that she had uh, seemed fine. And then South Pirin, which uh, I just saw, showed you. I mean, it's not it's just over there. So this is where I came from yesterday. Uh, after Slovyanka Mountain, we were actually from Gotif Peak. We joined the E4 trail, which uh, in Bulgaria it's very popular and a lot of people hike it. So at the moment, we're heading to Rodopi Mountains, it's just over there, so crossing the valley, uh, like every other transit section, a little bit of asphalt, some agricultural land, of course, but uh, not too bad though, not too bad. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better than yesterday, so that's actually affecting also my mood on what's to come, but uh, yeah, uh, it seems like it's raining out there at the moment. There's some forecast for rain today, but we'll see what happens. So entering Rudopi Mountains, uh, that's actually the biggest uh, mountain range of Bulgaria. A note about Slavyanka Mountain, cultural and logistical. Uh, so the cultural side is, uh, that was the first place where uh, I had the opportunity to hike along the former Iron Curtain where basically we had like an extra border inside the, the country to prevent people from either entering or escaping. More about escaping, but that's a different story. And logistical, uh, even though Slavyanka is very beautiful, it's uh, very dry though. So there's water only at the bottom of it when you start your climb up and then on the other side when you descend uh, at Slavyanka hut it's the closest and then uh, further up in uh, Pirin mountain there is several uh, water sources so Rodopi mountains here we come and uh, we're going towards the villages of uh, Leshten, Kovacevica, Dolen, Setovca and uh, Dospat Dam. So uh, I'll see you along the trail, guys. So currently hiking uh, along this path, it's a dam, so I made it here today, um, I don't know, maybe like 11-12 kilometers from the town of this path, uh, and uh, well filming has been a bit of a challenge the last few days simply because it's been raining on and off, which was just good, there's a water source there, so I'm gonna have to Hold on here for a second, make sure that it's available on the maps. It's just, just over there. There. Uh, so yeah, um, leaving Gotsedelchev, uh, making it through some beautiful villages of Leshten, Gornodrianovo, around Kovacevica. I didn't actually go in it, but uh, the trail passes by it. It's uh, it's like a kilometer away from Kovacevica and then we basically made our way to the village of Dolen. Both Kovacevica and Dolen are actually architectural reserve, reserves. All the houses that uh, 
either restored, refurbished or newly built, they have to keep the same architectural outlook, the facade of it and everything. Beautiful, beautiful villages. Uh, I'll definitely go back and spend some more time there in the future because uh, it was my first time. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the best thing that actually happened yesterday was um, I was um, hiking through the mountains and making my way towards the village of Dolan. I made it 40 kilometers to a, a small, um, like a temple, a small church kind of thing. Um, there is also uh, like plenty spots of campsite for camping there and water. Uh, but also it, it's like uh, a, a very popular place for the locals to gather and uh, happened to run into a birthday party. So the locals were so welcoming and they obviously invited me to their table, fed me some food, gave me some beer. Um, so that was a, a true trail magic uh, on the Balkan Green Belt. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a very pleasant evening. Uh, a bit noisy until late in the evening, but uh, uh, hospitality at its best. Uh, people were so, they were actually concerned, like, uh, did I get lost or uh, but funny story yeah so things like that happen um, always like the people in Rudopi mountains they have this fame of um, being very hospitable and willing to help uh, basically go out of their way to to make sure that um, you're fine you you well you help if you need any help um, and so on another note, Rodopi Mountains, it's just another vibe here though, uh, very, very different, uh, there's a lot of solitude because you're mostly in the woods, uh, wide roads, some trails, um, like forest roads, so, um, but uh, not, not busy at all, no, nothing, no, no vehicles, no traffic on them. Um, but it just has a different feeling though. Uh, there's the occasional view here and there, but uh, definitely Rodop Mountains will give that um, solitude vibe of uh, going through uh, a low elevation mountain with, with a lot of forests um, and lakes. Um, I'm not sure if there's another one along the way, I need to check the maps, but uh, Dospat Lake is a, is a beautiful place to, to spend some time around. So I'll go and check out this water source over there and uh, that's going to be the end of this episode guys. So that's pretty much um, all the way from Belastica mountain, so crossing Macedonia to Bulgaria, through Slavyanka, South Pirin and uh, entering the Rudopi mountains, the first part until uh, Dospat Lake. So see you along the trail, happy trails and uh, Leave some comments below if you need to.